Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel, and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique weapon, the Cryolator. Now, to acquire this weapon we will actually need to head back to Vault 111, the very place we begun the game in. As we all know, on the Pip-Boy map, Vault 111 is found in the very northwest of the map. Once here, we need to find the Overseer's desk, and right next to it there is a cage. Inside this cage is the Cryolator case, which as you can see has a master level lock on it. So you can of course use your lock picking skills to open it. Once it is open, the cry later is yours to take. Using this method will take a little while as you will need the fully maxed out lock picking perk. A much faster method is to go and get dog meat, our favorite canine friend. Once we have dog meat as a companion, head back into vault 111, head to the overseer's desk. Then once he stands still, you want to click on talk. Then you want to click on fetch and then you want to click on items. Dogmeat will of course find the nearest interesting items, and there you go, he has pulled it straight through the case. Now we want to go to Dogmeat and click on Trade. This of course will open up Dogmeat's inventory, and there it is. 200 cryo cells and the weapon itself, the cryo later. Now this method can be done 5 minutes after exiting the vault, or however long it takes you to get from Vault 111 to Dogmeat and then back. As always, before looking at the weapon's base stats and modding it out, I have reduced my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. So now let's mod it out. And in the first slot, we're going to be adding the crystallizing barrel. It turns the projectile into a solid, plus 9 times minimum range, plus 16 times maximum range, minus 40% sight spread, plus 100% minimum spread, plus 50% max spread, minus 15% recoil, plus 10% vats cost, and plus 3% sight time. I'll talk more in depth about this modification later on in the video. In the second mod slot, we're going to be going with the recoil compensating stock, which brings minus 7% sight sway, minus 60% sight spread, minus 30% recoil, plus 20% vats cost, plus 10% sight time, and plus 100% bash damage. And finally, we're going to be adding the glow sights, which brings 1% zoom, which means absolutely nothing, minus 10% sight spread, minus 7.5% vats cost, and minus 5% sight time. And now that the cryo later has been modded out, as I just did, it has a base ballistic damage of 23 and a base energy damage of 20. It uses the cryo cells as ammunition and has a fire rate of 90, its range is 203, its accuracy is 77, its weight is 19.7 pounds and its value is 404 caps. And as we can see up the top of the screen, it is now called the recoil compensated cryolator. So the cryolator, a completely unique weapon. Would you believe it Bethesda made a unique, unique weapon? A completely unique skin, a completely unique style of play and completely unique effect. Finally, we haven't received the cold shoulder when it comes to a unique weapon. If only we got this times a hundred. Now before we get more in depth about the barrel choices, I just thought I should let you know that half of the footage in this video is going to be with the standard barrel and the other half is going to be with the crystallizing barrel. This is just for visual diversity and although the crystallizing barrel is far better as a weapon modification and in actual use, I do find that in game... is much less aesthetically and audibly pleasing than this. But hey, that's just me. So now that we've seen the tip of the iceberg, let's dive much deeper and talk about the cryolator. With the standard barrel, the cryolator creates a cryogenic spray when fired that fades away at mid-range. Firing continuously at an enemy may freeze it solid and render it unable to move or attack for a period of time. More durable enemies will require longer exposure and some cannot be frozen at all. The cryolator can chew up large amounts of rather expensive ammunition, so use it wisely. Or you can go with what we've done. Not only making it a completely wiser weapon, but much more powerful. By adding the crystallizing barrel modification, which will convert the weapon into an automatic crystal shooter. This makes the weapon far more ammunition efficient, as well as granting additional benefits such as increased range, increased damage, as the crystals do ballistic as well as energy damage, and a very small AoE effect. However, the projectiles do not travel particularly quickly and suffer from a noticeable flight trajectory. But that's okay, and although to me it looks less 
cool, but the trajectory is nothing really to worry about. Even though it does exist, we now have a small AoE effect. We have an extra 23 base ballistic damage on top of the original 20 energy damage, and the range has almost been tripled. So we can pick off enemies far in the distance, and of course the ammunition efficiency is through the roof. So the crystallizing barrel modification is definitely the way to go. Now a very jolly Christmassy weapon shooting little snowballs. But where did the cryolator come from? If you read the Overseer's Terminal in Vault 111, you will discover that the Cryolator was developed by the Overseer of Vault 111 as a way to occupy time, waiting for the all-clear signal from vault Tech that never came. Using chemicals and components readily available within the vault, the prototype was able to be complete, making a cryogenic freezing available in a portable on-demand form. Conceptually, it is a flamer that shoots ice. In actual use, of course, with the crystallizing barrel modification attached, I did find it actually a pretty fun and useful weapon to use. Now the cryolator is a heavy weapon, therefore it benefits from the heavy gunner perk. And although with the crystallizing barrel it is now a semi-automatic weapon, it does not benefit from the commando perk. And after getting all of the appropriate damage increasing perks, I was only able to get the cryolator's damage up to 53. Well combined it was 106. It had 53 ballistic damage and 53 energy damage. So again combined 106 damage isn't that good. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad but for a heavy weapon you want something really meaty. And I suppose for a semi-automatic weapon it isn't that bad, as you can use it like some kind of permafrost machine gun, but the drawback from doing this is of course the rarity of the cryo cells as an ammunition type, as the cryo later is the only weapon in the game that actually uses the cryo cell as ammunition. Now, of course when you first pick up the cryo later it will come with 200 cryo cells, but apart from that finding them can be quite hard. But luckily they can be found being sold as ammunition from the weapon merchants in Diamond City, Cleo in Good Neighbor, Alexis in Vault 81, and Cricket the Traveling Merchant. And also, ever so interestingly, Fire Brigader Protectrons also drop cryo cells upon death. But all in all, I don't know if the cryolator was meant to be taken too seriously as a weapon, although it is incredibly fun, with that classic Fallout goofy touch, but on the face of it, it doesn't seem to be too usable. Although not on the face of it, I was able to wreck things much more quickly than I thought I would be able to with it. Sometimes literally one single crystallized pellet from the cryolator and it would kill an enemy instantly. I wouldn't be sneaking and these enemies would be incredibly high level. After all, my character is around level 87 during this video. So the enemies most certainly have more than 106 health, but they're dying instantly. I have no deep mathematical way of explaining this. This is merely just an observation. On paper, the cryolator seems okay, but in practice, I was wrecking everything. So keep that in mind if you were thinking about using the Cryolator as a weapon in-game. Now the Cryolator was supposed to appear in the final version of Fallout 3, but was cut out instead. Apparently the developers got cold feet. The version of the Cryolator in Fallout 3 does look fairly different. Pictures of it can be found in the concept art of Fallout 3. Now if you have incredibly good eyesight, you would have noticed that a Cryolator pistol was seen in the trailers before the game's release, but sadly doesn't appear in the finished game. Unfortunately, it was ice so lated. And very helpfully, the Cryolator's weapon modifications do not require any levels in the Gunlut or Science perks, making it easy to upgrade if it is obtained early on in the game. So modding it out is absolutely snow problem. But it got me thinking, if the police used this weapon, their days would be filled with double entendres. Also with this weapon, be sure to never attack an enemy from behind. Be sure to give them a cold front. By this point, your foes will think it's the weekend, as they'll be chillin'. When using the Cryolator, don't be remotely surprised if your game freezes. And finally, a rant. I was excited for a cryo weapon in Fallout 4, but more than that, a cryo weapon that would actually change the game. Sadly, they didn't add those cryo pistols to the game, cryo rifles, cryo shotguns, whatever. All they added was the cryo later, which is questionable in use. So we didn't get it in Fallout 3, and now we haven't really got it in Fallout 4. I don't know when we're gonna get cryo weapons, so unfortunately now is not the time for cryo. We'll just have to cryo later. And here it is, the cryo later in action.
you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Camel, and this has been my guide for the unique weapon, the Cryolator in Fallout 4. I do hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This, of course, will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. If you like birds, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link can also be found in the description. As always, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.